Hello, my name is Angie Smith, and I'm the director of the Roger Mudd Center for Ethics and also the Roger Mudd Professor of Ethics. Um, and I'm here today with Roger Mudd, who is a 1950 alumnus of Washington and Lee and whose generous gift has made this center possible. We thought we'd take this opportunity to sit down with Roger uh, at the start of our center to talk a little bit about his views about ethics and about the role of the center at Washington and Lee University. So welcome, Roger. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Angie. <laughs> and just to uh, put a footnote to my gift, uh, it uh, paid for our lunch today, by the way. <laughs> it did indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank I, uh, you know, I, um, I don't know where we can begin, except you begin with uh, a marvelous system that's existed at Washington and Lee since 1906. Mm -hmm and is still uh, running well and flourishing and is the envy of uh, colleges all over America. It's one of the few single sanctioned honor codes in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, West Point has softened its a bit, the University of Virginia has softened its a bit, and so uh, uh, I uh, am proud to be a a product of it and be a friend of yours, Angie. <laughs> Thank you. Let me follow up on that and, and ask you, so we do have this flourishing honor system. One might think, well, why do we need a center of ethics? We're already doing it all. But you think, and I agree with you, that there's still room here to have some deeper conversations about ethics. Maybe you can talk a little bit about some of the sorts of issues that you think students today need to think about as they go out in the world and they leave our sort of cocooned home here at Washington yeah, and Lee, yeah. what are some of the issues they're going to face and, and what sorts of things can we do with the center to prepare them for their professional lives and their lives as global citizens? Well, it's easy to say that uh, you do not uh, lie, cheat, or steal, mm -hmm. but that doesn't cover everything, does it? No, particularly it doesn't. Uh, in the society we live in now, particularly with the digital society we live in now. And uh, more specifically uh, within my old field, journalism, which has changed immensely since I left it. Uh, back then it was a fairly simple thing. You wrote as close to the truth as you could get. You, uh, you uh, made lots of phone calls to make sure you had it right and then you kept your fingers crossed that you had it right. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, there's no such thing as uh, waiting for phone calls to come back. Everything is on the line. The minute it's on the internet, it's everywhere. Uh, privacy uh, almost ceases to exist. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that more than any other issue is, uh, is a topic that uh, the center ought to be working on yeah. night and day. Mm -hmm. I agree with that, yeah. And when you think about issues of privacy, one thing I find fascinating talking to students these days is that many of them don't seem to have any concerns about privacy. They put everything out there on social media um, without any worries about it. I I'm wondering if you have thoughts about what they're, if you think they're missing something here, okay. what are the concerns that they should be having about this uh, new age yeah. of laying it all out there. Yeah, Angela Merkel was concerned, uh, I must say, <laughs> I about, uh, yeah, I, uh, th that's a, re that's a, a tough issue. Mm -hmm. And um, I suppose uh, uh, if, if everybody lacks privacy, and I think none of us has the privacy that we used to have, mm -hmm that that it becomes almost uh, uh, the standard of life. And I, I, I think uh, wh when nothing you do is private, it destroys the value of your thoughts in private, mm -hmm. your actions in private. I think privacy is one of the most cherished uh, qualities we have. Mm -hmm. in, a, in a democratic society, however, a, a privacy is, uh, can be pushed uh, to the limit, and I think that's where we are now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the, the minute the minute something appears on the internet, on Matt Drudge's right. uh, White House uh, reports, it goes all over the world, mm -hmm. and uh, all you have to do is uh, 
r repeat it and just cite old Matt Drudge. You don't right. have to check up on it. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's affected our politics as well? And I ask this in part because um, our inaugural lecture for the Roger Mudd Center for Ethics is Michael Ignatieff, and he spent time in politics, in Canadian yeah. politics, and has commented on how the media changes, the instant media, the 24-7 media, has made it so difficult today to even do politics um, because every word you say, yeah. right, is recorded, written down, can go out, you are not allowed a slip. Um, big change, I think, from maybe the good old days um, when you could, you know, be a little bit more thoughtful in your politics. It, uh, I can remember uh, uh, back in the, in the late 40s and 50s when I was getting started, uh, when you had a microphone, you ask permission mm. <laughs> of the senator, may I record your remarks? Right. Now, uh, no, no permission needed. Uh, you don't know when you're being recorded. You don't know where these men are coming from and women are coming with their microphones. You don't know what they're gonna do with the recordings when they get them right. back to the office. Right. You don't know whether they're responsible or not. Mm -hmm. But it's just open sesame. Right. You think that, yeah, go ahead. So, so it, it, it does affect politics and it means uh, particularly when you're in public, in a crowd, a rally, and you're uh, uh, on Capitol Hill, it means that uh, you, you cannot really say what you think for fear it'll be taken out of context. Yes, exactly. Let me shift a little bit. I want, I want to ask you a little bit about your time at Washington and Lee and some of the values that you found here during your time that you were able to take out into the world and that guided you in your professional life. Um, what was special about Washington and Lee for you? Well, my nickname was Boomer. <laughs> 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 and some classmates still call me that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I came, uh, I came as a transfer student in 1948. And uh, I had, um, gone to public high schools. I've been in the Army, and uh, I uh, did one semester at the University of Louisville, a municipal mm -hmm. college of, of uh, some distinction, but not, uh, not outstanding. Anyway, I, I transferred here uh, wearing a, uh, a corduroy jacket and my pants from the Army that I, I had died and as soon as I took one look at the gentleman of Washington and Lee, I had, I had to get a new wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it, it, uh, it wasn't that I came uh, without a, any uh, a sense of right and wrong. Right. But uh, what I realized was that uh, to live in a system, under a system that had an honor code, uh, lifted the huge burden off mm -hmm. your shoulders mm -hmm. about uh, locking things up and uh, being uh, uh, worried about uh, uh, whether anybody was looking over your shoulder. All that stuff vanishes. And it was, uh, it was uh, an experience that was memorable. And it, it puts a stamp on you mm -hmm. that uh, is eradicable, yeah. I must say. Mm -hmm. it, it did not, it, it did not uh, quite prepare you, however, for the um, ethical dilemmas that you might meet once you graduated. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about this at lunch today, about if you were a graduate of Washington and Lee and came out uh, with a fine sense of honor, and you married and had children, and your business required you to do a little fudging here and there mm -hmm. in order to move up the ladder so that your income would provide adequately for your family, you had that dilemma staring you right in the face. A moral dilemma. A moral right? dilemma. Yes. And it um, uh, would be interesting to know how uh, the graduates of Washington Lee handle that over the years. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure they do well, and I think uh, with the imprint that the school gives its graduates, I think uh, we have nothing to be worried about. Yeah, I agree. What are some of the things you think that the Ethics Center can do to ensure that our students are prepared for these inevitable moral dilemmas that they're going to face? Well, I, uh, you know, I think uh, uh, 
uh, a casework is uh, you know absolute uh, mm -hmm. dilemmas that you know look you in the face and require you to think clearly right. and humanely mm -hmm. about the dilemma yeah. and how you would solve it. Uh, uh, is one way we can do it. We can have uh, lectures, we can have seminars, we can uh, uh, reach out to the people in Rockbridge County and as far away as Buena Vista mm -hmm. <laughs> or Rafine. Uh, but as long as the word is out that the place to be is the Mud Center for Ethics at Washington Lee University, I think we will uh, we'll, uh, fulfill our uh, mission our mission. Absolutely. So can you think of a time in your own professional life when you faced an ethical dilemma? And, and if so, how, how, did you, how did you deal with it? Uh, the, the, the one case that uh, comes to mind, and there may be others that I just happen not to remember them, <laughs> the one case that comes to mind was that uh, John Glenn, Senator Glenn from Ohio, was caught up in a uh, in a, a savings and loan investigation, and uh, his wife Annie, and the senator, and my wife and I were friends. Uh, uh, that, in a way that a lot of reporters are with politicians, uh, Mrs. Glenn worked for the senator uh, in his office, uh, un an unpaid uh, uh, secretary handling mail and one thing or another. She was sitting next to the senator at the press conference. And I was sent to cover the press conference. It was, it was not a big, huge crowd, but you know, we were there. And suddenly I realized that the question I wanted to ask the senator would, I thought, be so offensive with Mrs. Glenn sitting there, having eaten at our table and vice versa, that I chickened out. Mm -hmm. I did not ask the question. Mm -hmm. Just stood there like, you know, a, a dummy. <laughs> Thank God uh, someone else, another reporter, asked the question. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I escaped. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it was a case of getting too close uh, t to your sources mm -hmm. and uh, depending on them for uh, a, a break in the news, and then when the time came, when they were in trouble, uh, you uh, faded away. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I'm, not, I'm not proud of that. It's a fascinating case, though, because, again, it, it raises this question of these different roles that you occupy, right? Yeah. Your role as a journalist at that yeah. point, and then your role as a friend. And yeah. as you said, they came into too close of contact, yeah. and so you felt these conflicting ethical obligations, yeah. really, I, I take it, coming from the two different... different yeah, I had the same problem uh, with my relation with Senator Robert Kennedy. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 my wife and I were friends with the, mm -hmm. that branch of the Kennedy family. And um, during the campaign, his campaign, um, uh, I was frequently uh, uh, described in the, uh, in the uh, uh, press as a friend of, the, of Senator Kennedy and his wife, Ethel. And so it um, immediately made uh, my, my work uh, reporting of him look, uh, you know, uh, uh, dented. Right. Uh, but I was uh, nonetheless uh, on the campaign and, and was filing radio reports and television reports on the senator. And I did one particularly tough piece on him. And uh, that night we were in, I think, Corvallis, Oregon, mm -hmm. and boarding the plane. And I'm w waiting to get on the plane. And here comes the senator. I thought you were my friend. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Uh -huh. I mean, laughing about it, but, uh, but, but nailing me right to the wall. <laughs> right, right. And yeah, you probably went even harder on him than you did on some others <laughs> right. because yeah, of yeah, that. That's right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I'm clean. <laughs> <laughs>